Well, good morning. Good morning. Did we wake you up? No, I'm kidding. I got a kid, but the man is still asleep. Be quiet. Okay. Where's this, uh, you, you, uh, you called me about last night? You think Minx Lockridge did something underhanded? Um, Nick, I'll be right back. Okay, hold that thought. She loves him so much, doesn't she? And you can just tell by looking at her. How does a woman in love look? Don't you know? I keep hoping I'll find out. Well, keep hoping. Good morning. Hi. You have visitors already. You're so popular. Here they are. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Good morning. Uh, well, what, what time is it? What are you guys doing here this, this early? Well, I had to be at work early, but we wanted to stop by and say hi. And you're looking a lot better this morning, you know that? Am I? I'm glad to hear it. This is right, you do. Oh, come on, tell me. I mean, it's 7 a.m. Uh, you didn't come by just to say hello, did you? No, not exactly. Um, Nick here has something to tell you, so I'm going to sneak out and let him do it. But I'll be back later and we can spend some time together, all right? Thanks, Kelly. All right. Okay. Oh, don't see me out. It's okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. I'll talk Bye. to you. See ya. So, what's up? Um, I have a hunch that you're not going to like this, but here goes. Kelly and I are pretty convinced that Augusta did not make that telephone to your dad to try to stop him from coming here for the kidney transplant. Well, wait a second. We, we knew the call came from the Lockridge's house, so uh, what close could it have been? I think I have a way to prove our theory. Look, what were you talking about? Dad said it was a woman's voice. We think it was Minx. What? <laughs> no way. Uh, Nick, I'm gonna have to fire you. No, 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 no. I am serious. Right now, our money is on her. No. I'm telling you, you're crazy. There's no way in the world Minx could do anything like that. So wherever you got your idea, just forget it. All right? You're wrong. Dead wrong. What's wrong? I, I can't find Brandon. Have you seen him this morning? No. Well, he's not in his room. I can't find him anywhere. Brandon! Sweetheart! Brandon! Brandon, sweetheart, where are you? Brandon? Oh, Santana. You're looking for Brandon. Isn't he here? No, he's not in his room. What are you doing here so early? Never mind. You don't even have to tell me. You certainly didn't waste any time, did you? Augusta probably called you at the crack of dawn to tell you the stupid mistake I made. Yes, it was a stupid mistake, Gina. How could you have done that? I'm surprised you're not more upset. But really, it wasn't my fault. If it was anybody's, it was Lionel's. I mean, to hide Brandon in that silly suit of armor. And I asked Augusta if there was anyone in the house because I did not want to be overheard. But she didn't know about it either. So I heard. I could have cut my tongue out when I said that I wasn't his real mother. Then he popped out of the armor. I tried to explain Brandon it. Brandon know knows that you're not his real mother. And he found out that way, Gina. No wonder you can't find him. He probably ran away from home. Brandon! You tricked me! You didn't know anything about it. You just... He's not up there, Santana. I already looked. Brandon! Brandon, sweetheart! Oh, hello, Brandon. Getting an early start on the day. How'd you know I was here? I saw you from my window. Can I sit in your lap? Oh, sure. Sure. In fact, I, uh, I was reserving it just for you. You still look pretty sleepy to me. <clears throat> no, I'm awake. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What is it you want to know? Who's my real mother? Well, that's kind of a, uh, a funny question, Brandon. Gina is your mother. You know that. I heard her say she wasn't. Well, I think you must have just misunderstood. She most certainly is your mother. She always has been. Were you really worried? Well, there's no need. Everything's just like it always was. Honest? Cross my heart. So why did you say that? Well, I, I don't know. We'll find out. You let Hear me you. I've been looking everywhere. You had me scared to death. 
It's all right. It's all right. He uh, he saw me from his window and just thought he'd come down here and say good morning. Sweetheart, please don't ever leave the house without telling mommy, all right? When I can't find you, I get so worried. I, I was afraid something happened to you. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. So what have you two been talking about? Oh, just man talk, right, Brandon? Right. Well, my little man, why don't you run back into the house? Um, if you go in the back way, Rosa will make you breakfast. I'll be in a little while and help you get dressed. Okay. Oh, sweetheart, if you run into Santana, just avoid her. She's in a very bad mood and doesn't want anyone around, okay? Okay. Bye, Mason. Bye, sweetheart. We'll talk more later, okay? Okay. See you in a little while, sweetheart. Okay. Bye. What have you been saying to him? Don't use that tone of voice with me, Gina. I don't like it. I don't like some things, too, Mason. Santana just tricked me into telling her what happened with me and Brandon. And I know she's going to try to use it to take him away from me. So, Mason, you have to talk to Brandon and straighten this thing out. Oh, really? Is that my job now? You expect me to run around cleaning up after the messes you've made? I expect you to help me when I need it. Now, you do it, or you'll be sorry. Gina, you know there's a school of thought which holds that threats are counterproductive. Well, it's all that you understand, and I know it. Mason, you do this, or else. Or else what? I have your father's will. The one that disinherits you. It's all hidden away and beautifully signed. If you don't help me with Brandon, I will find it and ruin you. So you do have it? Oh, you bet I do. I knew it all along. You must be pretty desperate to use a threat like that, though, Gina. You must realize that by ruining me, you'll be ruining yourself as well. I don't care what happens to me if I lose Brandon's love. And if you cost me that, you'll see how little I care. What are you doing here? Well, it's just that after waiting a while for my phone to ring, like several days, I decided to call you. Well, come on in. Thank you. Um, shall we get to the point? Are you hiring me? Well, Mr. Cranston, we have a policy at Capital Enterprises. We don't hire anyone without thoroughly checking out their background. Well, now, I've spent a lot of time with you, but I don't really know you. Okay, but you know I did all right by you in Hawaii. I mean, Eden, you told me that yourself, you know? And you know, I've given you my resume. You could easily have checked out my references. Well, I have a lot to do, and I have a lot on my mind lately. Okay, well, it's there when you feel that you have the time to check it out, and they're solid. So, in the meantime, don't you think I could just cash in on the fact that I'm Jack's son? I don't mean to offend you, Mr. Cranston, but everyone knows that Jack has never been married, and he's never said anything about having a son. Now, if you were me, wouldn't that puzzle you a little bit? Do you have a minute so I can bare my soul to you? No, really, I think you might find it worth listening to. Like it, that's all. I think it's kind of a dirty trick. But Minx had access to a phone. So did Lionel and Augusta. They were especially fond of me. I still vote for Augusta. But we're sure now it isn't her. At least let us try. Augusta hired someone to make the call. Okay, that's a possibility. And we can check into that angle after we resolve this one, okay? Now, if Amy can make that phone call, we can clear this up in no time. What do you say? Will you humor me? Amy? What do you say, sport? All right, all right, go on. But you're way off base on this one, Nick. Let me get the phone. Mr. Wallace, you pick up on this phone. She says it's OK, OK? Right. Yes, may I speak to Minx Lockridge, please? Thank you. Mrs. Lockridge, hi, this is Amy Perkins. Hi, no, no, I'm fine. I wanted you to know that uh, Brick was released from the hospital last night, and I'm taking very good care of him here at home. Don't get upset, no, I, I, it's the first chance I've had to notify you. Um, of course you can come by and, and visit him anytime you want, but, but Mrs. Lockridge, wait! She hung up. Did you hear enough of that voice to be able to tell? Well, it could be the same woman that called me in Bakersfield, but I'm not sure. You're not sure? No, son, I'm, I'm not. I know it. Hey, it's not conclusive. It is as far as I'm concerned. Now, I admit I hate the way she's been playing around my life, but I bet anything that she wouldn't hurt me. It's been just too terrific to me for that. So 
So whoever you're looking for, it isn't Minx. Stay away from her, Nick. Okay? Okay? Well, what's it gonna be? I'm thinking. Well, I don't think you have much of a choice. Who are the flowers for? The flowers are for me. I'm going to uh, try to brighten up my room a bit, since you don't bring me flowers anymore. You don't want me to, Mason. You've been carrying on behind my back, and don't try to deny it. Carrying on? That's an old-fashioned way of putting it. And I deny it categorically. Oh, stop it, Mason. Time and time again, you used me. You've gotten what you wanted from me, and you made a fool of me. Now, I'm going to get what I want. You hear me? Very clearly. I only hope the neighbors haven't. I'm past caring what the neighbors think. Nevertheless, Gina, let's not quarrel, huh? Look around you. It's a beautiful fall morning. What do you say we just wipe the slate clean and uh, start all over again? No anger, no old resentments. Most of all, no lies. What is this, some new kind of trick? You see how corrupt we've become? Even honesty seems like a new form of deceit. Mason, how can I trust you when you have so much at stake? Trust has to start somewhere, Gina. Has Mary managed to convert you? Are you going to go out now and preach the gospel of truth and candor, bearded and barefoot? I'm sorely tempted. Unholy men should be tempted by such things. All men can be tempted, Gina. Besides, Mason, we made a deal last night. Do you remember? Oh, no, no. No, there was no deal. You insisted, but I didn't agree to help you reinforce your lies to Brandon. How do you think it makes me feel, Gina, when he, when he looks up at me with those wide, innocent eyes and asks me to tell him the truth? I don't care how you feel. Your feelings are as important to me as mine are to you. I care about Brandon. Now you do as I say or else. How did you manage to steal my father's will? That's none of your business. It just happened to fall into my hands. Like a high fly ball out in left center field, huh? I suppose you found a clever hiding place for it. Oh, yes, it's in safekeeping. Uh huh. Of course, I haven't actually seen the will, so I don't really know if it's signed or not, do I? It's there and it's signed. Of course, it certainly would strengthen your position if I were to actually get a look at it. Then I'd have to cooperate with you no matter uh, what. Mason, you're not going to trick me. The will is signed and it's in a safe place. And I'll bring it out when I need it, which could be today if you don't do as I say. No, I don't think you have the will, Gina. And until something happens to convince me otherwise, I have nothing further to say to you. To paraphrase Byron, believe a critic or any other thing that's false before you trust a woman. So you see, I mean, it was a long time before my dad ever acknowledged me or could even accept responsibility for me. I mean, look, he had a casual affair when he was a teenager, right? He wasn't ready to accept the consequences of his indiscretions, <laughs> namely me. So how did you finally work your way into his life? Well, I think his guilty conscience got me the job. You know, I was about 15 and he suddenly showed up and introduced himself. Must have been a shock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. My mom was having it so rough then. I mean, constantly was getting into scrapes. I wasn't doing you know, all that well in school. And uh, just having him turn up like that, I mean, that didn't help matters at all at first. Not for a long time, in fact. And now? Uh, we met off and on pretty regularly back then. He showed me how I was screwing up my life. I'll give him that. And he paid my way through Harvard. And five years ago, he asked me to take his last name, and I said, no. I guess that answers my question. Yeah, so I'm related to him. And, you know, he's a great connection. But I'm not really related, if you follow me. I think I do. Well, do I have a job with Capwell Enterprises, please? I'll tell you what, I'll check your references. And as long as there aren't any more uh, family members and friends and relatives, I'll think about it. In that case, uh, I think you better scratch the first two names off the top of this list I gave you. <laughs> you want to start in about Minx? You're wasting your breath. I know I'm having trouble convincing you of this. Just listen to me for a second. Okay. Okay. Two very strange things have happened here. Number one, 
some mysterious woman called your father and told him he didn't have to worry about being a kidney donor to you because it was all taken care of. Number two, and you're going to love this one, somebody pulled strings in record time at the organ donor bank to make sure there was a kidney for you if you needed it. Now, if I'm right, I think it was Minx Lockridge. And it seems pretty obvious to me that what she wanted to do was not keep you from getting a kidney, but keep you from meeting your father. My father? Why would she? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out here, pal. And it would make it a lot easier for me if you weren't so concerned about me finding something uncomplimentary about Minx. Look, I didn't mean to make it tough for you. It's just... Look, I want to find out the truth even more than you do. Then I have your permission to look into this no matter what I turn up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But don't do anything about what you might find until you talk to me, huh? No, no, I wouldn't dream of it. I'll get on it right away. Say goodbye to uh, Amy and your dad for me, will you? Yeah. He's a pretty nice guy after all, isn't he? your friend uh he just uh he just left oh he said to say goodbye to you well look it won't good it won't be goodbye this time son but what i'd like to do is uh, come back next weekend and visit if that's okay with you sure and uh maybe i'll visit every weekend for a while just till we know you're gonna be all right now look i i don't want to make a nuisance no of no you, you won't be uh come whenever you can that's great uh, well, I, I guess I, uh, I better say goodbye to Amy, huh? Uh, you, 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 uh, you take good care of yourself, huh, son? Okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. We'll, we'll see you, huh? Oh, yeah. You'll see me. Goodbye, son. looking around. For what, Mason? Buried treasure? Yeah, sort of. Did you want something? Yes. I need to talk to you. All right, you might as well. Seem to be wasting my time around here. Go ahead. All right. For several months now, Mason, I have done a great deal of soul searching, and I've finally made up my mind for something. You want me to prompt you? No, I'm just thinking how to put this. You know that for a long time I have thought Gina was a terrible mother. Well, this last incident has really clinched it for me. How could she just blurt out that she wasn't Brandon's natural mother? Oh, no, no, wait, wait a minute. Let's be fair, Santana. Gina had no idea that Brandon was around when she said that. That isn't the point. To say that in front of Augusta or anyone else is like, well, it's like making a public proclamation. She knows what a gossip Augusta is. Santana, I don't think even Augusta is that indiscreet. What is it you've made up your mind to? The truth. I want Brandon told now. And I'd like for you to do it. Brandon thinks the world of you, Mason, and if you're the person that tells him, then he'll believe it. I think this whole thing needs to be brought out now. Yes, I know you do. And you can just go to hell, Santana. Brandon is mine, and he always will be. If you want to speak to your mother, Call her on the phone or wait till she gets home from work. You can go straight to hell yourself, Gina. This is one day I'm going to stay in this house as long as I want. And there's nothing you can do to get rid of me. Well, I'll just leave you two ladies to settle this in amicable fashion. Try not to throw anything breakable. I would suggest the books. You're still looking for it, aren't you? Which of us isn't looking for something, Gina? Well, you won't find it. Oh, I'll find it. All it takes is patience and time. And I have lots of both. Santana Mason is not going to help you. You're just wasting your breath. And just how do you know that? Because it's not in his best interest. Mason only does what's best for him. 
I'm surprised you don't know that by now. But then again, you never were too good at reading men, were you? Gina, Mason believes in the truth, no matter how painful it is for himself or everyone else. You see, that's one of his biggest weaknesses. That's also the weakness that's going to help me get my son back. Have a nice day, Gina. Mary's downstairs having a cup of coffee, so we have a minute alone, Dad. Looked in the study, the kitchen, the bedroom, so I thought I'd try here. Be just like Gina to hide them right under your nose. It'll certainly make life difficult for me if she actually has your new will all nicely signed in your rabbity little hand. Here, maybe I'm giving her too much credit for being clever. I even look through my own room. I thought that was a kind of irony that might appeal to her, but apparently not. You never know. Well, would you look at that? Sentimental souvenir tucked away out of sight. Remember when that was taken, I was... five? You liked me then, didn't you? At least you tolerated me more politely, and I took it for love. Mustn't follow in reminiscence, must we? Back to business. Mason, what are you doing in here? Hi, Mary. I asked you what you're doing. I uh, was just looking for some old belongings. I'll straighten up later. Well, I'd appreciate it. The nurses have enough to do. I wouldn't want to burden them with more work. By the way, I, uh, I picked you some, some flowers this morning. I haven't found a vase for them yet. I'd, um, I'd rather have my car keys back. Haven't forgotten. You want me to go pick it up for you? No, you wouldn't find it anyway. Sure I would. It's right out on... No, you won't. It was towed away this morning. It's going to cost me $100 to get it back, not to mention the cost of having a tire repaired. Ooh. I'll pay you for it. Well, I think you should. Can I at least go down there with you, help you get it back? Well, I, I don't know, Mason. I don't know when I'm going to find time to do it. I'm going to try for this afternoon if Miss Neely can take over for me. Well, let me know if you have any trouble. Can we, uh talk about last night? I don't know, Mason. Well, what do you want to say? I'm sorry if I embarrassed you or made you angry. Well, I did get a certain amount of revenge out of it. At least I know you enjoyed that part of the evening. <laughs> Not very Christian of me, was it? Well, I had a good time, too. Does that mean I'm into masochism? No, that means you're into sake, remember? Sake? had nothing to do with it. It was you. Um, I, I need to uh, concentrate on my work now. All right. I'll bring the flowers back later, give them to you formally, along with a check for the car expenses. I have to continue my search. I'll see you later. You haven't given up yet, have you? The Capwell never gives up, Gina. Then the Capwell is being very silly. Imagine looking so frantically for something you're not even sure exists. Tell that to the people who look for the Holy Grail. Mason, don't you want to know if you're getting warm? Sure. Am I? Yes, you are. You're always warm. I'm getting warmer by the minute. Stephen Capwell. Yes, I'd have recognized your voice. I'd come to a decision. Favorable? Well, I'm temporizing. I decided to hire you on a day-to-day -day basis. No guarantees for the future. I think it'll all depend on your performance. Well, I've never had any complaints about my performance yet, not in any department. Sales, service, contract. Look, I'm going to ask you to report to either here or the office every day. I very often work at home when my father is ill. Yeah, I understand. I'll see that you're assigned to a regular office at Capital Enterprises, and you'll share a secretary with uh, some of the other junior executives. Uh, junior, I, I see. Does that bother you? No, no, not a bit. Um, I take it you checked out my references. I talked to your father. I thought you said you weren't going to accept any comments from relatives. 
Well, Jack is a little different. We all know him and we trust him. Besides, I checked your business references and they were all in order. Great. Now, uh, um, do you have housing, say, for you and your family in Santa Barbara? Well, um, I don't have a family. And the uh, fact is, I'll probably just find a nice little bachelor pad somewhere around. So d don't worry about that. More importantly, when do I show up? How about tomorrow morning at 9? All right. 9 is fine. Um, tell me, what's your favorite flower? Why? Uh, nothing. I just want to send some to say thank you. Um, I like those little blue ones, you know, the ones that are on top of Mount Everest. Uh-huh. Well, in that case, maybe I should send you my favorite flower, because you see it just grows right around the corner at the florist. Kirk, look, you don't need to send me any flowers. No, I know. Oh, but I want to. Anyway, in the meanwhile, I guess just a simple thanks will have to suffice, uh, boss. Well, that takes care of round one. Hey, look at all of this. How you doing? Now, look at all of this. I'm doing research, that's what. Look at this. Quotes for the picture. Very nice. Very appropriate. I was right about you. You make a good editor, and you're not such a bad typist, Yeah, either. that's right. Like the joke says, I can type 50 mistakes a minute, right? <laughs> hey, how about taking a break? I'm fighting a deadline here, pal, right? Hey, pal, five minutes. It's not going to kill us, okay? Oh, yeah, all right. But Come don't on. blame me when we're five minutes late meeting the deadline. Uh. <clears throat> I want to know what that was all about this morning. What? About how I'm supposed to recognize a woman in love the moment I see her. What's to explain? Doesn't it kind of speak for itself? Yes, it does. But how does it apply to me? I'd like to hear a little bit more about that from you. I was talking about Amy and the way that she was looking at Brick and, and treating him, that's all. But you said specifically that I should know. Well, specifically, you should. So in other words, that's some kind of glancing reference to us? Us? As in you and me? Oh, me. Maybe. I don't know. What was I talking about? <clears throat> you know, I can tell a lot more about a woman by the way she kisses me than how she looks at me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of uh, in-depth interviewing or something? Well, it's the only kind worth doing. How would you feel about being interviewed right now? In or out of depth? Oh, in. By all means. In depth and at length. You really think this is going to help you know how I feel about you? I think it would go a long way towards giving me a hint. All right, then we'll give it a try. <laughs> I think I want to tell you something. Feel free. You can tell me anything you want. No, never mind. Hey, I do mind. What were you going to say? Nothing. Come on. No, there's nothing important. Nothing. Uh, Nick, look at this place. Are you looking at this? Mm. This is a disaster area in here. Look, we have got a publisher's deadline to meet. And there's a lot writing on it, too. You know that. And if he likes what we, we show him, then uh, he'll publish it. So let's not blow it. Come on. Hey, I don't intend to blow anything. I just want to know what you were going to tell me. I'll get into it later, okay, when we have time. We don't have time right now, and I don't have time to think, so... This isn't fair, Kelly. Look, anything worth doing is worth doing later, right? So come on, get uh, proofing on chapter one, and then we can do chapter two. Come on, we've got to tackle this thing first. All right, but I have the feeling I'm missing out on hearing something I would really enjoy. I'll tell you later, I promise, okay? Now come on, get with it. Okay, as it is, it's going to take us all night to finish. So what if it does? I kind of hope it does. Because I think it's going to be one beautiful morning.
having fun? I've looked every place I could think of. Cars, garages, gazebos, the pool, the stables, the grounds, the gardens, everything. Wherever you hit it, you hit it good. Have you looked in that big old dirty old well in the back of the property? Um, no, no, but it's all boarded up anyway. True, but you could still get in if you really tried. Oh, Gina. Gina, I'm tired of your games. I don't have the energy to keep getting the ball back anymore. Leaving so soon, Mason? Yes, I'm going to get cleaned up a little bit and do a little thinking. Don't wait up for me. Oh, Mary, good, you're back. Did you get your car back? Oh, yes, but the red tape, it took me four hours. Oh, well, that's just terrible. Is it all fixed now? Yeah, it's fine now. Okay. Uh, Mary? Yeah. Um, I know Mason sometimes can be very difficult to deal with, but did everything turn out all right last night? Gina, he is the most frustrating man I have ever met. I, I like him, but I don't know how to take him. Well, just remember, if you ever need advice, you just ask me. I'll be right here. Thank you. You're welcome. Gina, I uh, thought you might want to know. I saw Santana and Brandon out back. Looked like they were heading for the woods. What? Yeah. I would have put a stop to that. Oh, uh, thank you, Mason. Sure. Actually, I uh, saw you coming in and just wanted to talk to you. Tina saying terrible things about me? No, not at all. Oh, I have to get up to your father because I've been gone a long time. Well, what about your car? Did you get it all right? Oh, yes, along with the newly pumped up tire. Well, tell me how much it cost you and I'll reimburse you for it. You know, there wasn't any malice intended. I was just trying to prolong the evening. Well, you certainly managed to do that. Excuse me. Mary, would, uh, would you prefer it if I just left you alone altogether from now on? Yes. Maybe that would be better for everybody. I've got chapters one and two and no three, and then I've got four and no five. Five. Five is um, on top of the refrigerator. Got it. Hey. All right, got five. Now, where's three? I haven't the faintest idea. What do you think? It might be in the freezer? <clears throat> Once it's right in the bed, yeah, I don't know. I did. It's very comfortable, but the chapter isn't on it. Look, Nick, you may be used to working like this, but I am not. I think I need a little more order in my chaos. Look, what do you want me to do? Stop what I'm doing so I can clean up for a little while, huh? Of course not. No, let me do it. I'll do it. I'll just prowl around until I find you. Hey, chapter three, I got it. Great. You know, I think I'm getting a little stir crazy. Uh, how about you? I think I'm just uh, crazy in general. Hey. What's this? This is one of yours. This is me, isn't it? Well, it's supposed to be. Shouldn't have so much trouble recognizing yourself. I did it when you went to get the hamburgers. Is it any good? I like the hands gently touching my face. Mind telling me who those hands belong to? Is it true that an artist puts her innermost feelings into everything that she paints and draws? Yeah. You mean it? Mean what? I mean, it seems to me as if that uh, this woman is saying an awful lot with her hands. Like maybe she really cares for the guy. Yeah. You think there's anything more than just caring? Listen, we're not here to analyze drawings, okay? We're here to put together a best-selling book. <clears throat> You need to finish chapter one so you can get on to chapter two, okay? Anything you say, you be the boss, lady. Right. <clears throat> Stop looking at me. You're wasting time. I okay? can't help myself. You're just so darn watchable. Nick, come on. <laughs> okay, sorry. Hey, uh... Would you think I was a rat if I went for just a short walk? You don't want any company? 
Not from you, I don't. You have to stay here and work. Woohoo! Scrooge could have taken a few lessons from you. With all my love, Kelly. Okay. Hello. Hi, uh, Mr. Jenkins, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, no, we'll have it ready when we said we would. Right, um, you'll know the minute it's done. I promise, I'll call you myself, okay? Okay, good night. He's getting nervous about it, Nick. Listen, I'll see you later, I'll be back, okay? Yeah, have a nice walk. Yeah, listen, make it perfect, okay? I won't be gone too long. He's writing a letter to Joe. He's been dead for... Can you believe my mother and Jade talking about schools for John already? It's crazy. Yeah. You know, I like to watch you knit. Uh, look very serene. <laughs> Oh, very funny. <laughs> I don't know why they couldn't believe me in New Stalin when I said I wanted to knit all of John's clothes myself. Just imagine what they're bringing in while you're away. Ah, it doesn't matter. You know, there wasn't a, uh, you were right, there wasn't a baseball bat or a catcher's mitt and all that stuff. I think they would have, they would have honored him, but I don't think they would have loved him, you know? Here. And uh, we don't want our son growing up to be a symbol, you know, instead of a person, do we? No, we don't. My own fault. I never listened to you. <laughs> but I will now, I promise. I'm listening to you and my heart. Are you? Yes. Honey, I would have come back to you. I know your accident forced the issue, but I would have come back. I knew in my heart where I belonged. Johnny doesn't need a, a cabinet, he needs a father. And at least as important, I need a husband. So what are you gonna do about that, Mr. Wallace? What is it? Mason, it's getting late. It's almost 7 o'clock. I've been waiting all day for an answer, and I'm tired of waiting. All right. I'll talk to Brandon in the next few minutes. And you will say the right thing now, won't you? Because if you don't, I'll make Cece's will public. I have it all planned. I'll call Eden and Ted and Kelly, and I'll say, well, can you imagine that? Look what I just found. And then Eden will call Jack Lee, and he'll come over here and confirm that the will is the original will. Then we'll both go to the guillotine together. I don't mind. I lost my head over you a long time ago. It's just a pity that you don't feel the same way. Oh, come on, Mason. I, I don't like forcing you to do things. It's not in my nature. All I wanted was to be your friend and your ally and your lover. Why won't you let me be? Because. I'm not going to do anything that isn't of my own free will. I'm not going to live my life by your terms, Gina. I wouldn't submit to my father. I'm certainly not going to submit to you. Well, it doesn't have to be submission. Why can't it be sharing? Because you make it impossible. I'll tell you another thing you can bank on, too. I'm not going to sacrifice Brandon's happiness for the sake of my inheritance. Nobody's going to bribe me or blackmail me into doing anything I don't want to do anymore. Must be nice to be so incorruptible, but you really don't think I have your father's will, so it takes a bit of the shine off of your integrity now, doesn't it? Go call Brandon in. You'll see how much integrity I have. They're right outside, Brandon and Santana. Now, Mason, please, don't make me do something I'll hate. I really want us to be nice friends. <sighs> nice friends don't blackmail each other, Gina. Call him. Brandon, honey, Mason wants to talk to you. Hi, Mason. Hi, Brandon. I'm over here. I want to talk to you for a minute. <clears throat> sure. What about? Well, it's about this stuff about your mother. You know, Brandon, a mother is a, um, is a very important part of a boy's life. And she stays that way, even after the boy grows up. You've heard the expression, blood is thicker than water, haven't you? Blood is thicker than water. All right, Mason. 
You asked for it. I've always loved you, and I always will. And I think of you so often and feel you close to me. But seeing your sister so happy today made me realize how right that is. And I know you'd want that for me. Daddy's so sick now, and he could die any time, and I guess it all makes me realize how short life is. taught me a lot about loving and so I'm going to try to live and find love and be as happy as I can I'm not being disloyal to you when I tell you I've come to care for a very fine man it's taken me a long time to realize it but I know now that I love him so this is like saying goodbye to you in a way even though I know that you and I will always be a part of each other. With all my love, Kelly. And since we had our little talk this morning, you've been feeling okay, haven't you? Yes. Good. Come on, Mason. Tell him about his mother. I intend to, Santana. Don't rush me. Tell me what? 